Welcome to USP 800 Compliance by Partner Care Pharmacy Services. In your handouts, you should have the following documents. Partner Care Pharmacy Services Policy and Procedure, Safe Handling Procedures for Hazardous Drugs. Hazardous Drug List for Partner Care Pharmacy. Personal Protective Equipment Required. Partner Care Pharmacy Services Hazardous Drug Risk Acknowledgement Form and Medical History Questionnaire for Hazardous Drug Handlers. More than 8 million healthcare workers in the United States are potentially exposed to hazardous drugs each year. Both acute and chronic health issues could impact your pharmacy staff and patients. Considering the potential risks, in 2019, USP created General Chapter 800 to define new standards for handling hazardous drugs. This is the USP chapter that describes the standards for haz handling hazardous drugs. United States Pharmacopial Convention, USP, develops the standards. The new standards for handling hazardous drugs help promote patient, worker, and environmental protections. Unlike USP 797, which were guidelines for sterile compounding, USP 800 details the entire handling process from receipt to disposal. The USP Convention is a nonprofit organization that develops standards and is enforced by the Federal Drug Administration, the FDA. Healthcare Safety USP 800 details the entire handling process from receipt to disposal and is designed to enhance healthcare safety. This USP chapter applies to all healthcare workers that come into contact with hazardous drugs regardless of practice setting. Therefore, this chapter applies to pharmacies, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, outpatient treatment clinics, veterinary pharmacies, and hospitals. The Nation National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, originally published a list of hazardous drugs in 2004, with the most current version being 2016. NIOSH defines hazardous drugs as those that exhibit one or more of the following six characteristics. Carcinogenicity causes cancer. Teratogenicity disturbs the development of a fetus and can cause miscarriage or birth defects. Reproductive toxicity, organ toxicity for those who take the drugs at low dosage, genotoxicity, which damages the genetic information in a cell and causes mutations and can lead to cancer, and finally, structural and toxicity profiles of new drugs that mimic existing hazardous drugs. NIOSH is the organization that publishes a list of all approved hazardous drugs used in healthcare. The NIOSH list consists of approved drug products and divides hazardous drugs into three groups. How do you know what drugs in the pharmacy are hazardous? We have a list. It's divided into three groups. Group one, which is used to treat cancer, and they can also pose a reproductive risk. Group two, which are non-antiplastic drugs that meet one or more criteria for a hazardous drug and may pose a reproductive risk. And group three, drugs that primarily pose a reproductive risk to men and women trying to conceive, are pregnant, or breastfeeding. The NIOSH list is updated periodically and it is important for each pharmacy to review the current list. All three groups of drugs on the hazardous drug list may pose a reproductive hazard or risk. In your handout, 
you have a current list of hazardous drugs at Partner Care Pharmacy that are handled. This is a listing of the current drugs and the groups they fall into. How does a pharmacy develop their own specific list? First you review the current NIOSH list. Then you review drugs that have been introduced to the market since the last update. The list must be reviewed at least every 12 months and any new drugs should be screened and considered. A pharmacy's hazardous drug list must be reviewed every 12 months and when new drugs are added to the inventory. Risk Assessment Pharmacists are required to do a risk assessment to de determine the risk of exposure. Exposure means to not be protected from contact with something like hazardous drugs. Risk of exposures include drug residue present on drug containers, including outer containers, dust from counting and repackaging tablets, manipulating drugs through splitting tablets or diluting injectable medications. Priming an IV. Handling contaminated body fluids or materials and disposal of these at the nursing home level. Management of spills of hazardous drugs and moving hazardous drugs throughout the healthcare setting. Risks of exposure that need to be considered include drug residue on containers, including outer containers, dust from manipulation such as counting tablets and splitting tablets. All possible routes of exposure should be considered. USP 800 provides information on potential exposure opportunities based on different activities the healthcare worker performs while handling hazardous drugs. Exposure activities can include tasks completed in the pharmacy and also tasks completed by nurses in the clinical setting. Contamination sources relate to points at which hazardous drug materials, such as a liquid or dust, can expose someone during different tasks, such as transport, receiving, and storage. For example, the purchasing staff and other staff in the area could be exposed when a drug breaks while being stored in the pharmacy. These are contamination sources and opportunities for hazardous drug exposures. Who is at risk? All those in contact or in the vicinity of hazardous drugs may be at risk for exposure, including those at the pharmacy and those at the nursing facility. The chapter requires that each pharmacy designate a person for developing, implementing, and maintaining the requirements of hazardous drug laws and regulations, as well as ensuring the competency of everyone handling those drugs. The designated person at Partner Care Pharmacy is the pharmacist in charge. Facility and engineering controls increase worker safety and protect the environment. It is important that hazardous drugs are in designated areas that are clearly marked. In addition, it must have restricted access, be away from break rooms, and there must be a designated area for receipt and unpacking of drugs. When storing hazardous drugs, the area must be clearly marked with a sign prominently displayed, must be away from break rooms with food and drinks, and be in a designated area. How can someone be exposed to the harmful properties of hazardous drugs? Types of exposure include routes of unintentional entry. For example, a technician can unknowingly absorb or ingest hazardous drugs through their skin or mucous membranes, inhalation of dust, 
accidental injection, inge ingestion from contaminated foods, ingestion through mouth contact and contaminated hands, aerosols that generate dust, spills or touching a contaminated surface. Remember, do not touch your face as this can be a route of unintentional entry. Surface areas can be contaminated by hazardous drugs. Hazardous drug residue can contaminate surface areas when handled and can lead to unintentional entry. This leads to the vital importance of wearing the proper personal protective equipment. Possible contamination surfaces include bottles, vials, door handles, pens, pencils, computer keyboards, all high touch areas. The handout personal equipment required gives specific information about what should be worn when handling hazardous drugs. USP 800 offers specific standards and protocols for personal protective equipment. Gloves should be chemotherapy and two pairs of gloves are required for compounding. Remember to inspect the gloves. Even a small pinhole can be problematic. Gowns must be disposable and resist hazardous drugs. Regardless of the gown, they must close in the back, have long sleeves and cuffs. Lab coats, scrubs, and isolation gowns are not appropriate. The minimum PPE required when counting and repackaging hazardous drugs is a gown, mask, and two pairs of chemotherapy gloves. Look at the Partner Care Pharmacy Policy Safe Handling Procedures for Hazardous Drugs. This policy and procedure gives detailed instructions on the safety practices pharmacy employees must follow in regards to hazardous drugs. All pharmacy must control exposure of staff to, har to hazardous drugs by having this policy and procedure and posting signage, identifying all containers, providing the proper PPE, and providing education and training on hazardous drugs. The CDC sequence for putting on and taking off personal protective equipment have posters are posted in the pharmacy for your reference. It is important to follow the steps in order to protect yourself and limit contamination. Traditional gloves may not adequately prevent contact with hazardous drugs. Gloves designed for chemotherapy must be used whenever handling hazardous drugs. This poster explains how to safely remove PPE. Remember to always finish with washing your hands immediately after removing all your personal protective equipment. Unpacking hazardous drugs from their external shipping containers must be done cautiously and carefully in case any breakage has occurred during transport. Once the drugs are unpacked, they must be stored in such a way to prevent spillage and breakage. When receiving, appropriate PPE should be worn. A spill kit must be accessible. Do you know where the spill kit is located in the pharmacy? If the container is damaged, the first action to be taken is to seal the container and contact the distributor. Do not try to clean up hazardous drugs in a broken container. The most common activity in the pharmacy with hazardous drugs is counting or repackaging. All personnel involved with the hazardous drug handling must be trained on appropriate precautions to take. Everyone handling hazardous drug substances must be given information regarding potential hazards that person may be exposed to. In your handout, there is a hazardous drug risk acknowledgement. 
When counting and repackaging hazardous drugs, do not place them in automated counting machines, co-mingle them with other drugs in a bingo card, or use equipment, counting trays, pill counters, or splitters that have been used for non-hazardous drugs, as the hazardous drug residue may still be on these items. Deactivate, decontaminate, clean, and disinfect. Deactivating, decontaminating, and cleaning is required for all areas where hazardous drugs are handled and with all reusable equipment. Disinfecting is required for the sterile compounding areas. Cleaning agents should not be sprayed onto surfaces to disinfect or clean because when cleaning up a hazardous drug spill, it increases the likelihood of spreading hazardous drug residue. What do you do if there is an accidental exposure? Do you know where these items are in the pharmacy? The spill kit, the eyewash station, and the material safety data sheet information? If there is an accidental exposure of a hazardous drug, you should alert everyone, get the spill kit to clean, and look up the drug in the material safety data sheet binder. There is a medical history questionnaire for hazardous drug handlers in your packet. Please complete this. NIOSH recommends that employers establish a medical surveillance program as part of a comprehensive prevention program. Medical surveillance involves requesting staff to give information regarding their health status and monitoring their future health as it relates to the potential exposure to hazardous agents. This information can be used to identify possible prevention errors. Once you have completed this treating, training, Sign and return the Hazardous Drug Risk Acknowledgement Form and return it to Human Resources. Complete the Medical History Questionnaire for Hazardous Drug Handlers and return to Human Resources. And take the quiz. Thank you.